Okay, so we were looking at diagonalization, or tetron diagonalization. In that, we're looking at uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And we've just done a second example. I think now we're going to have some theory. So I think we're right here. Yeah, okay. So we call this E thing called E lambda the set of all those vectors such that AV equals lambda V. So the set of all eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda, we call this, this set the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda. Okay. Note that the eigenspace contains a zero vector, even though it is not an eigenvector. Okay, so basically this is all the eigen, this is all the, this is all the, you know, the definition of an eigenvector is a vector that satisfies this equation and is not zero, but the eigenspace just is all the vectors that satisfy this equation. We include the zero vector, and you'll see the reason we do that is because we want the eigenspace to be a subspace, and a subspace has to contain the zero vector. Okay. So the dimension of the eigenspace is the geometric multiplicity of lambda. It's called the geometric multiplicity of lambda. So remember, the algebraic multiplicity of lambda is the number of times it's a root of the characteristic polynomial. But, and then the geometric multiplicity is the dimension of the eigenspace for that eigenvalue. Okay. The geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue is always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity of that eigenvalue. Okay, so in this case, in this previous example, we had lambda 1 equals, we had lambda minus 1 squared, so this eigenvector, eigenvalue, eigenvalue um, 1, remember, has an algebraic multiplicity of 2, and then we found that the eigenspace for it had two linearly independent eigenvectors, so it's the algebraic multi the geometric multiplicity for the eigenvalue, or the geometric multiplicity for the eigenvalue one was then also, also two. Okay, and for five five just occurred once, so its algebraic multiplicity was 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 one, and so was its geometric multiplicity. Okay. So we remember we said that we put, we stuck the, we made sure that this contained the, the zero vector as well, so that it would be a subspace. Now we're going to prove that the eigenspace is a subspace. Here's this proof. Okay, so if u and v are vectors in an eigenspace, the sum of those vectors is still in the eigenspace because so so we're saying that we're saying that this uh, we're saying that this the thing called the eigenspace, which is it's so far as we know just now is just a subset, but I mean you can see it's called an eigenspace because it's actually a subspace. Well, take two vectors in the eigenspace, add them together. And then because A is a matrix, or A is a linear transformation, it has this linear property, and you get AU plus AV, which is the same as lambda U plus lambda V, because U and V are, are each of them eigen uh, vectors. Then you can factorize out the lambda, you get lambda U plus V. And so this proves this equals this, is showing that U plus V satisfies the eigenvalue equation, the eigenvector equation for lambda. It's showing that U plus V is an eigenvector of a with eigenvalue lambda. Okay, so you, that means that u plus v has the same eigenvalue as u and as v, so u plus v is in the same eigenspace. So it's also in E lambda. So eigenspace is closed under vector addition, and similarly, you know, you multiply the, eigen, the eigenvector by a scalar alpha, or you can pull the alpha out the front, then you get the lambda u, and then you can swap the order. We've actually done this previously, and you get that a times alpha u equals lambda times alpha u, so that proves that alpha u is also an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, as long as u is. Okay. So the eigenspace is closed in scalar multiplication. We know that it contains a zero vector. We, you know, the zero vector does satisfy that equation, even though it's not an eigenvector. Um, so, the, so that proves that the eigenspace is indeed a space, is indeed a subspace. Okay, so we... In the two examples we did before, we had this matrix with, remember we had this matrix that had two eigenvalues, three and minus one, and these were its, its eigenspace, we got these eigenvectors one, one, and one minus one, so the eigenspaces then were these two things, which are just lines, basically in R2. And then for the matrix B, remember we had eigenvalues were one and five, but one was repeated, so that had an algebraic multiplicity of two, and then also it turned out to have a geometric multiplicity of two as well, because it had two different linearly independent eigenvectors for that eigenvalue of one, and so this was the eigenspace, a two-dimensional space, set of all linear combinations of those two vectors. 
um, you know, sometimes maybe it's easier to, well, efficient to write it like, like this. It's the span, it's the set generated by, by its basis, which you can call the, which you call the eigenbasis, right? The basis for the eigen, a basis for the eigenspace is called an eigenbasis. Okay. And this one had algebraic multiplicity of one, so it must have a geometric multiplicity of one as well. Indeed, it did. And it was that. Okay. Uh, so now we have the geometric interpretation stuff, which I'm not sure I'm going to bother with because it's not really how I think about things. This one. Yeah, this, I don't like this whole unit circle thing. It confuses me. I don't find it at all clarifying. I find the way, I, I, like I discussed earlier, it's you know the, the stretching or something, and I can back to this much more cl much clearer to me. Uh, no, I don't find that, uh, that's all that stuff. Okay, but then this stuff, this stuff is more interesting and important. So I'll do that in the next video. Okay.